Welcome to the garden. I'd like to give my terrarium that morning sun and remove the lid because we get some decent condensation on the back here. This actually forms on the window side, on the side that's facing the window. But look at how amazingly this is filled in. It's just lush. I don't mind bending this fern over because it keeps it contained and that way I can cap it at night. But I'm going to be doing a little bit of maintenance today. I've got some leaves to cut that are dead and I might just poke around and see if we can give the other fern a little more light. So the old fern, the one that was a native variety, it sprouted this little fiddlehead and then died. So I'm going to pluck him out, leave some space for the new ones, because there are new ones forming. I've got a dead leaf, so I'm going to be plucking this out, and I'm just going to take this one too because it's blocking our fern. I really want that fern. I've got plenty of strawberries outdoors. It's such a wonderful little project. This fern is just so cool. I love having ferns in a jar. See the Creeping Charlie's getting huge. Growing into the cap because I think it's going to produce flowers. We've got some of those little fuzzy nodes on the stem here and here those are buds and I think they're about to flower it's even got a little color on the stem so that's a beauty the other flower I think is almost done it's forming a little pod at its base so I think it's going to produce seeds but it's still beautiful. It's got a little bit of that purple color left. It's so nice. These cuttings here with the red stem are providing a nice pop of color. Yeah, so it's a one gallon. It's a really good size. I could really experiment. I couldn't have fit this fern in a smaller jar. I mean, it barely fits in this one gallon. I've got to tuck the leaves in. But they are just extraordinary. It seems to really do well in this bright morning sun. And it's a gentle light. It's not that scorching heat of the midday. So it's not going to overheat the jar, which is important. Look at that. You can just jump in there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just love this so much. So these little guys are why I like to keep that lid on. I have no idea what that is. There's a little mite and then there's this little guy crawling around. So far that's the first one I've seen. So I don't think I'm going to need to do any control right now. But eventually I may need to keep some of these kind of surprises in check. But we got some really nice root growth forming over here. Really beautiful strong roots. There's a little bit of algae or moss or something. So I want to keep an eye on that. I like to try and get that shadow right about at soil level. 
so that the plants still get light but the roots don't. Get that beautiful condensation. So I know there's a good amount of moisture in here. I'm also keeping an eye on the moss. They're one of the first things to dry out. So they'll be able to tell me whether I need to water or not. But look at that guy go. Not sure what he is. So our seaweed moss has that little spore pod. Really looks good. It's bright green actually. So that'll probably dry up like a little seed pod and then start to drop some spores. Which would be awesome. I really like this moss. Definitely reminds me of seaweed. The smells coming off of this is just incredible. It's like the forest floor. It's very mild and natural. It's kind of earthy and that moss. I think when they breathe, they release a little aroma. But it's like a jungle in there. There's new sprouts shooting up, little mystery sprouts. I'm just loving this. So I hope you guys stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.